there's this clip going around at the moment, right, that people are sharing of Brian Callen acting a little bit annoying at Skankfest during the Fire and the Kid um, live podcast segment they had on with Legion of Skanks. And people are now saying or surmising from this that, yeah, people calling me country AZ. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, you know, Koyla, country AZ. You know our guad. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Uche as well, same. Um, being, mis being famous, is it looks like it's miserable. You know what I saw, actually? The reason why I, re I realized being, I don't know reason why, but one of the reasons why I think it's miserable, the whole Taylor Swift thing ta and, and what you call it, Travis Kelsey thing going on at the moment. She can't even date a cute boy, you know, just have a bit of, and again, even if it doesn't go anywhere without it being a whole thing. They've had to speed run that fucking relationship. Meeting a family, meeting all the wives and girlfriends, cameras everywhere. It's so fucking yucky. Yeah? You can't even just have a regular life dating. It always has to be in front of cameras. Like everyone waiting outside of restaurants, camera flashes going off a million. It must be so horrible, man. Honestly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's continue. So um, let's say this. Going back to what I was saying to you. So there's this clip going around of Brian Callen acting extra annoying during the Fire and the Kid live podcast Axe Gang Fest where they had Legion of Skanks guys on there, Louis J. Gomez, Big Joe Okerson, and David Smith, right? And some people are surmising, oh, has Brian Callen always been the problem? I don't think that's the case. I think what you're missing from this clip and what you're not seeing is that Brian Callen purposely, I felt like, went into that live podcast wanting to do everything possible to take all the attention and heat away from Brendan. Because if there's one thing about Brian, if it, he's, you know, you can say a lot of things about him. He's a bit of a cuck. He's a bit, you know, limp-wristed. He doesn't have a backbone. He may or may not be a rapist and stuff, allegedly. But one thing you cannot say about him is that he's not loyal to Brendan. He is insanely loyal to Brendan because of everything they've kind of gone through over their lives and over their careers. So he's going to do everything in his in his power to make sure that Brendan, his Cody, his ride or die guy is protected. And he's also keenly aware where his bread is buttered. And he knows if Brendan gets embarrassed, if Brendan gets dunked on on that sort of stage, that's going to hamper his ability to make money. That's going to hamper his ability to keep up the alimony payments. That's going to hamper his ability to look after his fucking family. And he doesn't want that. So he made sure to go to that live Fire and the Kid podcast taping at Skankfest with Legion of Skank guys. And he made sure to put all the attention on him by being as insufferable, annoying as possible in order for everybody to think, oh, maybe Brian's a problem. I think that's what he did. That was the big internal plan that happened. And we can see it here, courtesy of this clip. I was with Shab. We were in, a, we were in your Porsche back in, the, back in the day when you were still fighting. Uh-huh. Yo, big up Crash94. Yeah, appreciate you, brother. William wants you to notice him, senpai. Rolling eyes face. Why is, why is William to talk to me? What's going on? Oh, William, William. Uh, big up, William. Thank you for being here, my friend. Rolling eyes face. Thank you for being here. I've noticed you. No problem. I've noticed you. Everybody here is important. We're all important here together. Let's not idolize anybody. I'm a nobody. You don't need me to notice you. You need the Lord above to notice you and your family and your friends. That's the most important people that need to notice you. Once they see you, everything else makes sense. I'm a nobody. Enjoy the show. Let's go. Guy, this guy had those Hold on. Let me, just, let, me, let me just say right now. Let me point this out. They don't keep, this is the moment. This is it. This is the, I just pinpointed the moment. Why? And it's not even Brendan's fault. It's yeah. Brian's fault. I know. These people will never own a Porsche. I know. They hated that you just said that. It doesn't matter because they it, fucking. I don't hate about Porsche for a Porsche. He doesn't give a fuck. I drive a Dodge Ram. This, this, he's, but the thing about it, Brendan's Porsche, an everyman. He'll, he'll drive it every day though. He doesn't keep it there. He'll fuck. Hey, it. you're he'll, not helping. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. he doesn't. He's like, yo, when this guy inevitably fucks your girlfriend. Hey guys, don't fucking listen. If you all pooled your money together, you could get a Kia. So don't listen to these guys, all right? Anyways, that's the clip that's going around. Everybody's saying Brian Callen is, was really always a problem. I don't think so. Brian's always been a bit of a, you know, 
a bit insufferable and a little bit hard to like anyway especially over the years especially as you've kind of seen him just kind of you know not really go anywhere with his career especially doing the same thing again and again the same material the same mannerism the same jokes on pods it's kind of frustrating because he is I'd, I'd say he is quite talented as being a comedic actor I think he still hasn't probably maximized or reached his potential that way he probably never will now because of the whole you know rape allegations unfortunately he's been completely excommunicated from the Hollywood industry so he's basically you fucked on that side of things unless he starts making movies and tv series with ben shapiro but we see how that stuff ends for some people so it probably isn't an option either but i feel like in this particular case he never wanted brendan to go up there and get embarrassed which is commendable they're friends at the end of the day they're co-hosts they're business partners of course he's not going to let his friend go on stage and get dunked on and get ragged and flipping roasted by these guys on stage he's not going to ever allow that so that was obviously the case but it was very heavy-handed his approach you could clearly see he went out of his way to try to make everybody understand how annoying he can be how flipping under your skin he can get and just how you know insufferably um, attention-seeking he is it was almost kind of nauseating how much he was trying to get the legion of skanks guys to try to like him like performing in front of them like just like trying to match their cadence and be one of the boys and bro up with them it was just like oh come on man have some self-decency but but taking my disgust and my dislike to one side i understand they're friends their collaborators their business partners of course he was never going to let his friend get up on stage and get embarrassed he was always going to try and protect him and act as a human shield it was just unfortunate we saw him being the human shield with both his mouth his hands and his anus that's the only problem he backed up his ass onto all those guys on stage he held his mouth open for flipping brendan to stick it in and he had his hands open wide for the fans in the crowd if they need to place their dicks in his palms so it was disappointing it was un, you know not the most entertaining thing to watch in the world but i completely understood why brian callan did that because you know he knows where his bread is buttered and he wants to make sure that he's able to keep up with his lifestyle and the only way to do that is to make sure the 1.6 million dollar man that is brendan Schaub is looked after at all times